We're here with Jacko Jackson from King Crimson. Jacko, it's great to talk to you again. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm all right, thank you. So we saw you last year when uh, Crimson played at the Palladium yeah. and the band's got another suite of, of dates because there was this ambition to play 50 dates as part of the, the 50th anniversary yeah. uh, of the band. Tell us about the lineup of the band because I think that's changed slightly. Yeah, Bill Reeflin is no longer with us. He's being replaced by Theo Travis, who's worked with Robert and I've worked with. He's a sax player. Uh, nominally, but he'll be playing keys. That's when I've seen him before playing playing the sax. Yeah, he played with uh, Steve Wilson's band and for a while, and David Sylvian, currently in Soft Machine, and has worked with Robert uh, as a duo. The big headline dates that are coming up in the UK is Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, we're doing three nights at the Albert Hall, the 18th, 19th and 20th of June. What can we expect, if you can tell us, compared to the, the previous shows you did at the Palladium? Well, there'll be different sets. We're adding, we're adding to our repertoire. We've currently got about... 48 pieces, I think, in the repertoire, and the set changes every day, every show. <laughs> so I was reading that they've just uh, done further work on the sound system in the Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, and the guy that was in charge of that is a big King Crimson fan, so um, he invited our sound man down to be involved in the, uh, the preliminaries from that. And in terms of your time, both formerly with King Crimson, then previous with the other Crimson members in the Schizoid Band, mm. how do you feel that you personally have developed as a musician being associated with Robert and the Crimson family? Well, I guess it's a, you know, it's all a challenge. So I've ended up playing music that I possibly, I wouldn't even known I would have been able to have played, I guess. I find myself playing some of Robert's um, parts in the earlier stuff, purely down to the fact that Robert uses a different tuning now than he did on the early records, which makes some of it ergonomically quite difficult instead of the notes are closer together. So, you know, that's been an enormous kind of challenge and learning curve for me to play those parts. Having got to that stage or this stage right now, does it inspire you further to say, actually, uh, it's brought out more musicality and music in myself that I'd like to record as Jacko, like solo material? There's a bit of an in-joke that Robert and I had, which is when I turn up with a piece that I've written for Crimson or a piece that I've taken something he's given me and then created for Crimson, uh, he used to say, I think this is marvellous, it's an ideal track for your next solo record, which of course meant we're not doing this in Crimson. And uh, funnily enough, I've now got enough material for a solo record, so that's one of the things I'm currently doing. So will that be a traditional song-based record, instrumental record? Yeah, it's a bit of both, but mostly songs, but a bit of both. When we met, we talked about a lot of the work you've done as a musician. You know, we talked about Tom Robinson, Level 42... Uh, the Nolans came up in conversation <laughs> as well, I remember. <laughs> I was probably drunk when I brought that up. <laughs> I was just wondering if there are any musicians now that you'd like to collaborate with outside of Crimson, you know, looking at your own material, looking at uh, other possibilities. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's various players that I'm, I'm hoping to, to work with on the solo record, and there's, there's a couple of other projects I've kind of got in the planning. Uh, I'd like to do something with Nick Harper, is Roy Harper's son, who's brilliant. Okay. I think he's brilliant. Uh, and and we've, we've talked about doing something. I mean, that, you know, that's not a commercial enterprise. That's something I want to do just because he's such a fantastic bloke and such a talented guy. But yeah, I guess it gives you a platform. There's a perception about you that, that allows you to maybe do, do some things that are interesting that you might not have had the opportunity to do beforehand, I guess. Given that this year is all about the 50th anniversary, doing the 50 or one hours we've heard today, 51 gigs. <laughs> yeah. Where do you see your role in King Crimson going in the longer term? Do you think there'll be a version without Robert, for example? No. No Robert, no Crimson, definitely. I can't see that. I can't see it being called that. In terms of your career within Crimson, do you feel like you're just getting started now? Uh, no. I don't think I'm just getting started. I think the first tour might possibly have been the only tour, I guess. So as it's continued, uh, you know, you, you get beyond the fear and beyond the, the strangeness of it and you, you think, actually, this is my job, you know. So I feel comfortable with it and I'm happy to go where it goes, but I, I'm in no way in charge of what happens or you know, how long it lasts. It's been amazing it's been this long, it's the sixth year. I guess historically that's just about the longest incarnation in one chunk, I think. Yeah, you're right. And yeah. what's great, that what he spoke about earlier on was... The fact that this lineup can and does a great job of it is representing the full, I was yeah. going to say catalogue, that probably does a disservice, but the full, the full set of songs, all the incarnations. And I think as a music fan and a writer, that's what we really like about it is it, it presents, one, it is unpredictable yeah. because we don't know what's going to be in the set, 
but secondly, it, it melds together the different eras really well, plus the fact you have the on-stage configuration. Yeah, I think the thing that the configuration does is is destroy the, the standard concept of what a rock group is. You know, It's not the lead singer down the front and everybody is a kind of supporting feature. It's, it's much more egalitarian than that. It's like a mini orchestra, I guess. And, and y- y- you know, you're aware of it when you're on stage too, that the, the kind of attention, the focus of attention moves depending on who's, who's doing what in a way that, that, that doesn't really happen in a more kind of conventional setup. Yeah, I think that's good. Hence Robert's kind of referral that it's, you know, that idea that there is, you know, this is the first lineup of the band he's ever been in where there isn't somebody resenting him, <laughs> which is funny, but it's, you know, I guess there's, it has a truth to him. And I, I think we are all serving the music. It's not, you know, there isn't a kind of main ego person ruling it together, really. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, kind of in closing, that the shows that have played him just presented the, the music in, in a different light dynamically because of Gavin's arrangement the, yeah, the three drums yeah. it worked perfectly well so we're really looking forward to the Albert Hall shows and uh, those people watching this or listening to this in other, whatever other venues it's a great show so we look forward to seeing you in June thank you yeah. very much Jacko Thanks. cheers